Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video in our series of learning everything we can learn in VisionOS documentation. Here we are looking at an article about bringing your AR kit app to VisionOS, updates in iOS or iOS app that uses AR kit and provide an equivalent experience in VisionOS. If you're using AR kit to create an augmented reality experience on iPad and iPhone, you need to rethink your use of that technology when bringing your app to VisionOS. ARKit plays a critical role in delivering your content to this display in iPadOS and iOS. In VisionOS, use ARKit only to acquire data about the person's surroundings. And you are doing so using a different set of APIs. In VisionOS, you don't need a special view to display an augmented reality interface. Build windows with your app's content using SwiftUI or UIKit. When you display those windows, VisionOS places them in the person's surrounding for you. If you want to control the placement of any 2D or 3D content in the person's surroundings, bring, build your content using SwiftUI and RealityKit. When migrating your app to VisionOS, reuse as much of your app's existing content as you can. Vision OS supports most of the same technologies as iOS, so you can reuse project assets, 3D models, and most custom views. Don't reuse your app's AR kit code or any code that relies on technologies that Vision OS don't, does not support. For a general guidance on how to port apps to Vision OS, see Bring Your Existing App to Vision OS. Adopt technologies available in both iOS and Vision OS. To create a single app that runs in both iOS and VisionOS, use technologies that are available on both platforms. While ARKit in iOS lets you create your interface using several different technologies, the preferred technology in VisionOS are SwiftUI and RealityKit. If you are not certain, uh, currently using RealityKit for 3D content, consider switching to it before you start adding VisionOS support. If you retain code that uses older technologies in your iOS app, you might need to recreate much of that code using RealityKit when migrating to VisionOS. If you use Metal to draw your app's content, you can bring your code to VisionOS to create content for 2D views or to create fully immersive experiences. You can't use Metal to create 3D content that integrates with the person's surroundings. This restriction prevents apps from sampling pixels of the person's surroundings, which might contain sensitive information. For more information on how to create a fully immersive experience with Metal, see Drawing Fully Immersive Content Using Metal. Convert 3D Assets to USDZ Format The recommended format for 3D assets in iOS and VisionOS is USDZ. This format offers a single compact file for everything, including your models, textures, behaviors, physics, anchoring, and more. If you have assets that don't use this format, use Reality Converter tool that comes with Xcode to convert them for your project. When building 3D scenes for VisionOS, use Reality Composer Pro to create your scenes that incorporate your USDZ assets. With Reality Composer Pro, you can import USDZ files and edit them in place non destructively. If your iOS app applies custom materials to your assets, convert those materials to shader graphs in the app. Although you can bring models and materials to your project using USDZ files, you can't bring custom shaders you use wrote, use wrote using Metal. Replace any custom shader code with Material X shaders. Many digital content creation tools support the Material X standards, and they let you di create dynamic shaders and save them with your USDZ file. Reality Composer Pro and Reality Kit supports Material X shaders and incorporate them with your other USDZ asset content. For more information about Material X, see materialx.org. Update your interface to support Vision OS. In Vision OS, you manage your app's content and the system handles the integration of the content with the person's surroundings. This approach differs from iOS where you use a special ARKit view to blend your content and the live camera content. Bringing your interface to VisionOS therefore means you need to remove this special ARKit view and focus on your content. 
if you dis can display your content using Swift UI or UI Kit views, build a window with those views and present it from your VisionOS app. If you use other technologies to incorporate 2D or 3D content into the person's surroundings, make the following substitutions in the VisionOS version of your app. If you create your AR experience using Reality Kit and AR View, update it to Reality Kit and Reality View. If you use Scene Kit and AR SCN View, replace it with Reality Kit and Reality View. If you use Sprite Kit and AR SK Views, then replace it with Reality Kit or Swift UI. A Reality View is a Swift UI view that manages the content and animation you create using Reality Kit and Reality Composer Pro. You can use a reality view to any of your app's windows display 2D or 3D content. You can also add the view to an immersive space scene, which you use to integrate your reality kit content into the person's surroundings. You can load iOS storyboards into a VisionOS app, but you cannot customize your interface for VisionOS or include 3D content. If you want to sh share interface files between iOS and VisionOS, adopt Swift UI views or create your interface programmatically. For more information about how to use Reality View and respond to interactions with your content and see add 3D content to your app, replace your ARKit code. ARKit provides different APIs for iOS and VisionOS, and the way you use ARKit services on the platform is also different. In iOS, you must use ARKit to put your content on screen, and you can also use it to manage interactions between your content and the person's surroundings. In VisionOS, the system puts your content on screen, so you only use ARKit to manage interactions with the surroundings. Because of this more limited usage, some apps don't need ARKit at all in VisionOS. The only time you use ARKit in VisionOS is when you need one of the following services. Plane detection, image tracking, scene reconstruction, hand tracking, world tracking, and device pose prediction. Use plane detection, image tracking, and scene reconstruction to facilitate interactions between your app's virtual content and real-world items. For example, use plane detection to detect a tabletop on which to place your content. Use your world tracking to record anchors that you want to persist between launches of your app. Use hand tracking if your app requires custom hand-based input. To start ARKit services in your app, create an ARKit session object and run it with your data providers for each service. Unlike ARKit in iOS, services in VisionOS are independent of one another and you can start and stop each one at any time. The following example shows how to detect horizontal and vertical planes. Data providers deliver new information using an asynchronous sequence. Here we have some code where we create an ARKit session. We create a plane detection provider for horizontal and vertical space planes. Using that data, we run a session of ARKit in our task asynchronously and we look for updates asynchronously uh, asynchronous stream from our plane data for anchor updates upon uh, an update of what event of added and updated we update the planes when we don't see the planes we remove them if you use the world tracking data provider in vision os air kits automatically persist the anchors you add to your apps content you don't need to persist those these anchors yourself. For more information, see how to use ARKit and see ARKit. Isolate ARKit features not available in VisionOS. If your app uses ARKit features that aren't present in VisionOS, isolate that code to the iOS version of your app. The following features are available in iOS, but don't have an equivalent in VisionOS. Face tracking, body tracking, geo-tracking and placing anchors using latitude and longitude, object tracking, um, object detection, a app clip code detection, video frame post-processing. Though whole body tracking isn't available in VisionOS, you can track the hands of the person wearing the device. Hand gestures are an important way of interacting with content in VisionOS. 
Swift UI handles common types of interactions like tap and drag, but you can use custom hand tracking for more complex gestures your app supports. If you use ARKit ray casting in iOS to detect interactions with objects in the person's surroundings, you might not need to that code in Vision OS. Swift UI and Reality Kit handles both direct and indirect interactions with your app's content in 3D space, eliminating the need for ray casting in many situations. In other situations, you can use the feature of ARKit and Reality Kit to manage interactions with your content. For example, you might use ARKit hand tracking to determine where someone's pointing in the scene and use scene reconstruction to build a mesh you can integrate into your reality kit content. And with that, we have reached the end of another article in learning everything we can learn from Vision OS documentation. We have, I believe, three more articles left at this point. Well, actually two more articles. And once we're done, we'll be done with the series until there is more documentation. After which, uh, we will be looking at creating sample apps.